I believe I died and came back to life. And how if you have this near-death experience, it can change everything. What is there to say? We're all just playing out what we know at our level of consciousness. And in some ways, it's a devastating play. And I think there's goodness in all of us, but some of us have veered so far away from it because of fear of being hurt. There's lightning. Fear of being seen. So many reasons why we hide. So I died and came back to life. For realsy. Because <laughs> I feel like time is speeding up. When you have a sense of your own mortality, everything becomes super important. So how can we sift through what is truly important? When we're inundated with information, how can we truly live? So I almost died a couple of different times in my life. And I really haven't shared this with very few people, if anybody. But it hit me today because I started thinking about where is this emotional hangover coming from? And why do I feel bad about talking about narcissists? And why do I feel bad about talking about anything? And one reason is because of these many deaths happening every day. I'm not who I was a moment ago. Something may not be true. Now, all those signs and things like that are true still. Signs of narcissism, which, by the way, are sets of behaviors. They're just behaviors. We're just looking at behavior on what it is to be human. So I started looking at my own behavior and why is this like bothering me or like hurting my heart or making me feel fearful? And the epiphany that I had today and why I want to share this near-death experience with you, and I will, I promise, is we're only here for a short time. How do you really want to live? The reason I want to, to do this YouTube channel is because I want to connect and I want to really live and express and be vulnerable and authentic. But that isn't always easy. So when I had my very first, I'm going to share with you two that I've had, and I've had a few, <laughs> I believe, in my life, which I know is unusual, and we're all unique and unusual. <laughs> so maybe you've had these as well, or maybe you can relate to them, or maybe you can relate to the, the small mini deaths that we face all the time, the death of a relationship, the death of your old way of being. We mourn these things. We can if we're open to our evolution. The very first time I had a near-death experience, I was in California. I was uh, at the beach. It was a hot summer's day. I was there with a ton of people, um, a bunch of friends. I went down there with like six friends. One was really close and the others were like more uh, acquaintance. I really just met the others that day. They were like friends of friends, but tons of people at the beach. And I went in and we were swimming in the ocean. Everybody was swimming and all the things. And a riptide took me and it took me out. It took me down and out and I'm a good swimmer. But the ocean doesn't mess with nobody, right? Like it, it's, if that riptide pulls you in, it's gonna pull you in and down, and it did. And I had an awareness and I know enough about the ocean that I knew I was in a riptide. And I knew if I struggled a lot that I would use up all my energy and I wouldn't come back out. So I just held my breath as long as I could. I saw this big white light because I started getting to a place where I was like almost passing out because I was holding my breath as too, too long. And I saw this um, like white light and it wasn't just the sun through the ocean. It was this other thing. It was this other feeling. It's undescribable or there was a weightlessness that was beginning to take over me. And then suddenly it was 
it was as if I was pushed back, but not by the riptide. It was like by this other force and I came up and out. And then it was like, la, 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 like all the action and activity of the beach and everything was just continuing. I lost my top. I was like, oh my God. And like, it, you know, the embarrassment and the confusion and all the things. And I come back on to, to shore. My friends were all still playing. They didn't even notice what happened. <laughs> Nothing personal, right? And then there were some surfers on the beach that were sitting nearby. And I sat down and I was like catching my breath. I mean, near death and I'm not kidding. So I was very winded. I could hardly breathe. I did have my top, but it was like around. So I was, you know, I was in a bikini. So I was like trying to get that on and stuff. And they looked over at me and they said, it's a riptide out there. I don't know why people are swimming. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thanks a lot, dude. But it was a very surreal thing because I went through this massive moment. And I think the reason why I don't really talk about that one or any of them is that it was this massive life-changing moment to go from this near-death experience to be pulled back into life, to see life still unfolding as if nothing had ever happened, and then trying to describe what had just happened and people just looking at you with blank face because it's too hard to comprehend. But that day I, I was changed a little that day because I knew I had the awareness. It was like an agreement with me and, and God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. I knew that I was given another opportunity. I knew that. And then I just kept that to myself. That was in like 2008. Then in 2010, um, I was diagnosed with melanoma, which in other videos I've shared, but if you're new to the channel, you have no idea what I'm talking about. So I was diagnosed with melanoma after going for a routine visit to my dermatologist. My dermatologist did not want to remove the mole, did not think it was cancerous. I insisted on removing it, ended up being filled with melanoma. I was raised to John Wayne Cancer Center and all these other things. They said count from 10 backwards. I, I remember going to eight. And then suddenly I saw a bright light. It was almost like the mandalas that I use, which now I have as a tattoo on my back where the surgery scar was, but I use them in a lot of the meditations. And all of these angels were everywhere singing and healing me. And I heard, it's not your time it's not your time you still have work to do on earth and you're going to 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 fulfill your mission the same clarity that i had when i heard the news that i had cancer coming out of a deep meditation being uh, sitting in the marina and listening to the seals and the boats clanging and the, the mass of the sail clanging and just the beautiful scenery and having that feeling of being so connected and alive was the same feeling that I had when I know that I visited that same light that I saw when I was in the ocean that day. When I first came out of it, I felt so euphoric so blissed out, so connected, so on point with what my mission was. I felt like that was never gonna leave my awareness. I was, how could I ever, I mean, I could look at a tree and start crying at the intricate details of the leaves and just how beautiful this experience is. And then suddenly coming back into the experience, coming into humanness, into physical form, having relationships with narcissists, having challenges, having this, having that. You, you start to have amnesia, you can. So how it changed my life initially is I launched an entire business. I changed the course of my entire life by tuning into meditation more for my healing. My cancer doctors and team still believe that I had a lot more in my body and it suddenly vanished. I believe that was through meditation and the power of dedicating my energy to my healing. Of course, if it's your time to go, it doesn't matter how much of that you do, it's, it's your time. But I knew it wasn't my time, so I knew I had things to do. 
you don't have to go to all the way almost dying or to even see that white light, but you can reach those states in meditation. And what that is, at first that even scared me in meditation because I would reach those altered states and I thought, oh my gosh, I felt this way when I like died in the ocean and when I was on major drugs going through a surgery. So how am I feeling this when I'm totally sober in meditation? And at first it sort of scared me, but then when I tapped into it more, I realized that that is all of this. That is this experience. That is a reality that's happening simultaneously. And the amnesia is when we think that we are in this physical experience and we are in this world of like, that person's a narcissist, that per and that stuff is very real. And yet there's something so much bigger. So if we can begin to look at, yeah, when somebody adopts these behaviors that we call narcissistic behaviors, it's out of a protection of human, humanness. And I think some of the pain comes from when we wanna fix other people's humanness or we wanna love them into health and wholeness. But when really the liberation and how this has changed my life is you love yourself into health and wholeness. Now I can check in with where have I veered off? Where am I making somebody else wrong? Even if they've done you wrong, by the way, they have no bearing on your life. Your life is so much bigger than that. So when people talk about having forgiveness, it really is healing to have forgiveness for somebody, even if they've done something horrible, because it has nothing to do with them, it's to do with you. But in turn, it heals everybody in some way because that is energy and those times that I've gone into the light either through meditation or almost leaving this body I had the realization that that's all we are and what's the heavy hard parts we experience darkness in this density of human experience the hard part is when we forget totally and we all do to some degree or another, unless you're completely enlightened, living like Buddha or Jesus, or you know somebody who's been completely spiritually enlightened. So we have these mini deaths all the time. Come back into the light is to acknowledge, wait, that's, that's not how I wanna live this experience. That's not part of my mission on this planet. It's not to condone everything. It's not even to condone your own behavior. But in this moment to go, how do I want to be? So I've gotten a couple really interesting comments this past week. And one was from a subscriber who said, you know, well, what about the gray area when you're talking about narcissism? Look, everyone has a spectrum of everything in this human experience. We all have degrees of something because, again, their behaviors inside of us. So how we can address the gray area is to turn back within and go, first of all, not to take responsibility. It's not my fault for somebody if they're mistreating you, but you can go, how do I want to be inside of this? Somebody is always rude to you, self-entitled, using you, manipulative, uh, lack empathy. You know, these are character traits that describe narcissism. Do some people have just one or two? Yes. Do some people have all of them? Yes. Do some people have some of them at different times? Yeah. So that's why the near death experience, meditating on your death without having to actually die, just meditating, meditating on all the many deaths that you're experiencing every day can help you get into touch with what is the gray area? The gray area is your whole life. We operate in extremes all the time. It has to be this or it has to be that, black or white. I either love them or I demonize them. This life experience is messy. We get messy. Sometimes we have the best of intentions, we're misunderstood. Sometimes you have the best of intentions in your whole life and and you misunderstand. 
So the, the deaths and the leaving the gray area, the black and white thinking and allowing ourselves to actually live in the gray area, which is what life is. It's not one or the other all the time. Devil or saint. Human experiences, some, in some moments I'm choosing my highest and best. In some moments I feel like I'm not. And to bridge that gap between those. We can't control everything that happens to us. I cannot control every person, place, or thing and how they're going to treat me. What these near-death experiences have shown me is that you have this opportunity. Every moment that you're alive, you have an opportunity to mourn who you were a moment ago. And then to give this moment a new chance. And this moment and to come into meditation so that you can remember that this is a gift, this life. And every relationship that comes into your life is a gift, even the ones that challenge you, especially the ones that challenge you. It's like coming back from a great trip. You're like, I'm never gonna forget this feeling. I know it, it's in me. Or like when you fall in love with somebody, I'm never gonna feel different or have a bad day. And then you do. What do you do then? Those are the really pivotal moments. How can you allow yourself to be in the gray area of your life then? I had a comment from somebody who's like, how can I feel when there's like death and terrible things happening around? Of course you don't want to feel that. that. It's horrible. The reason I say to feel everything, to have all the answers, is because then you can go, how can I heal this? Not to feel it and stay there, but how can I be with myself through even this? How can I love myself even through this life experience? How can I do that? That's why we feel everything. Not to live in a place of turmoil. See, the opposite happens when you choose not to feel. You actually choose a life of turmoil then. You think you're protecting yourself from feeling, but you're not. And I think that's where the biggest crimes can happen. Because when you've shut yourself down from feeling, well then sky's the limit as far as being horrible. But when you allow yourself to feel and you face that darkness within you so that you can come into the light so that that part of you can die many deaths every single day. The death of misunderstanding. The death of the old me trying to prove myself. The death of me trying to be chosen and seen by somebody. And coming back into the awareness that I can truly see myself. I can have compassion for somebody. I can forgive. I can come back into love because nobody's given another day. And if you think you're just given it, you're taking it for granted. So the reason why it feels time is speeding up for many of us is because we're aware that life is not black and white. There's a massive gray area. And in the gray area, we get to choose how we want to be when the extremes are at play. So how do you want to be in your one precious life? Have compassion for yourself and other people, but don't sign up for the mistreatment. Every moment is a moment in your life. And if you are being mistreated and there's no escape, how can you really love yourself inside of there? No one can imprison your mind, nobody. No one can imprison your heart. You can feel massive heartache. It can be a really challenging situation, but they still don't own you. You can still free yourself. You have the ability. No one gets that power over you unless you give it under any circumstance. So that's how we can live in the gray. That's how we can deal with, okay, this situation is this. Assess each situation per moment. Don't hold on to this big baggage of, is it this, is it that, is it black and white? Are they evil, are they a saint? Everyone is everything. It's a big stew of human experience. 
but how do you want to be in it with your one life? You have something to share. You're here right now. So that means your mission is not up. You have something to express. You have an ability to connect, to heal, to love. So keep healing that part of yourself. Keep healing anything inside that tells you that you have to assess everything and figure it all out and just be right here with it. And if it's pain, go, wow, this is really painful. I've been very open about different um, people I've dated who I really cared for and then was dismissed by. That can be really painful, but it's okay. Wherever they are on their soul's evolution, that's where they are. Where am I on my soul's evolution? See, the pain comes from what does that mean about me? Or I guess I'm the label they put on me. No, you're not. You're not any of those things. Neither are they. Let that part die. Mourn that. So we don't have to live in these extremes. The extremes are rare. The near-death experience is rare. But you can access it through meditation just so that you can go, whoa, oh yeah. I'm here for a reason. And if you don't go all the way to that place, that's okay too. Whatever is right here is what you're supposed to be working with in your life. So whatever happens, whatever challenge, whatever upset, you know, are they a narcissist? Are they not a narcissist? Am I healing my past? Am I not healing my past? What's going on? It's all right here for you. You're being taken care of. Time is speeding up in a sense because we're waking up to the fact that no one's given another moment. So don't take your life for granted. Have the near death experience so that you can really live. Meditate on that. You're here for a reason. <laughs>